All right, I'm gonna solve quiz two in preparation for quiz four. Um, so, yeah, practice quiz two. Um, we're given a situation where we have two asteroids. One asteroid A with mass M is traveling 40 meters per second, uh, an angle of 60 degrees south of east, and asteroid B has a mass 2M, and that's traveling 30 meters per second due west, or in the negative x direction. Um, they collide, and A splits off into two pieces, one of them goes off on its own, asteroid C, so it has a mass of 0.5 m, half of A, um, and we know its speed is 120 meters per second, but we don't know its direction. And asteroid D is the other half of A sticks to B, and those travel off together. Um, we know they're moving north, but we don't know what uh, the magnitude of that velocity or momentum is, so we need to know its speed. Um, we also know there's no external force here. This is just two asteroids colliding and exchanging momenta. So our initial momentum, P initial total, is going to equal our P final total. So if we find the momentum of these two and add them together, that will be the same as the momentum of these two added together. So let's start by finding the initial momentum because we have all the information necessary for that. So we'll start with the X component. In the x direction, our p initial x is just the sum of p a x plus p b x, which is equal to the mass of a times the velocity of a in the x direction plus the mass of b times the velocity of b in the x direction. The mass of a is m, and the velocity in the x direction, we need to do some trig, so we have 40 meters per second at this angle, so we have an x component and a y component. Our x component, so this vax, is the adjacent side of the triangle. So we're gonna use cosine. So vax here is 40 meters per second times cos of 60 degrees. And that's positive because we're moving in the plus x direction. And then for b, we know its mass is 2m and its velocity in the x direction is just negative 30 meters per second. So I'll put a negative here, 30 meters per second, because it is only moving in the x direction and it is moving to the left, or in the negative x. Um, so we don't know what m is, but hopefully that'll cancel out later on. So we have cos 60, which is a half, times 40, so this is 20, minus 60, where we get negative 40 meters per second times m is our initial x momentum. Now in the y direction, same type of thing, we have p initial y is just m a v a y plus m b v b y. There is no v b y, right? b is only moving in the x direction, so this term is zero, so we're only left with the y component of a. Again, the mass of a is just m, and the y component of its velocity is here, which is opposite the angle we're given. So we're gonna use sine. So this is gonna be 40 meters per second times sine of 60 degrees. And that's negative because it's pointed in the negative y direction. Uh, yeah, so now we can just evaluate that and that comes out to negative 34.6 four meters per second, also times this m, which we're not exactly sure what it is. So now we have our initial momentum in the x and the y direction. Um, so let's plot that out and see what it is. So we have both negative components. So our p, here's our p initial x, here's our p initial y to the left and down. These are not to scale, but we know our total momentum is pointing down and to the left, which also means our final momentum is gonna be pointing down and to the left. Um, okay, so let's see what we know about our situation uh, based on the information in the problem. So uh, let me just make more space here. So here's my P final. We know that because it's equal to P initial. We're also told that the asteroid D is moving north so we know PD, we don't know the magnitude of this arrow, but we know it is 
pointing north. So this is one of the momenta, and this is our final, then PD plus PC has to add up to this final. In other words, PC has to be this uh, vector here, pointing down and to the left. So PC has a negative X and a negative Y component. Um, the reason that's important is because now we can know what angle we're talking about. So let's say we wanted to get the angle between C, you know C is pointing down and to the left, so we can look for this angle theta that's between C and the Y axis. That'll just be easier when we're plugging in um, to try to describe the components of C to know what angle we're talking about, whether it's respect to the Y axis and if Y axis, whether it's positive or negative. So C is pointing down and to the left, D is pointing north, and yeah, so let's go into our final situation. Let's do the algebra. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase everything except the answers we just found. So now we have, since these are our initial momentum components, they must also be equal to our final momentum components because momentum is conserved, right? So PIX is PFX, same thing with Y. And now PFY and X can be broken up into, whoops, equals, can be broken up into the pieces that contribute from C and D. So PFX is just the X component of C plus the X component of D. So that's MCVCX plus MDVDX, right? So C's momentum, D's momentum, all in the X direction. The mass of C is 0.5 m, and the velocity of C, the x component, which would be this piece here, if we're calling this angle theta, the x component of PC, PCx, is opposite it. So here my x component is going to be the sine of this angle theta, right? So we have magnitude of PC, and we can just put the magnitude here, which we know. So why don't I actually just plug that in? We know this is 120 meters per second, right? So it's 0.5 meters times 120, or sorry, 0.5 m times 120 meters per second times sine of this angle theta, which we don't know yet. And that's going to be negative because it's pointing to the left or the negative x direction. Um, great, so now this is a complete equation, we have negative 40 meters per second times m is equal to pfx, or pfx is also equal to negative 0.5 m times 120 meters per second sine theta. So the m's cancel and we can just solve for theta. Uh, I was going to use an inverse sine and stuff, so I won't do the actual calculation out here. Out to 41.81 degrees, so that's the angle between the momentum vector of C and the negative Y axis. So there, we found the direction of C, which was one of our objectives. And now we can take this down into the Y component. So now we have uh, PFY is just MCVCY plus MDVD. Y, so just the Y components of each of their momenta. Um, MC again is 0.5 M. VCY is now the Y component of C, so VCY or VCY, either one, just whether or not we multiply by M. So that is going to be our same 120 meters per second hypotenuse times now the cosine of this angle theta, which we just found, times cos theta. And that's also going to be negative because it's pointing downward. And then um, we have our velocity for D, which is just going to be plus, pointing in the positive x direction. We said it's moving north. The mass of D, which is 2.5 m times um, its velocity in the y direction, which is just its entire velocity. So we could write it as the magnitude or the speed um, of D. And that's our other unknown. So now we have 
negative 34.64 meters per second times m is equal to PFY. PFY we know now is equal to this thing we just wrote out, which we know everything here. We know theta, so our only unknown is the speed of asteroid D. And if we solve that out, turns out that VD here, magnitude, is equal to about 4.03 meters per second. Uh, right. So now we have the angle of C and the speed of D. And specifically, when we were right, if we wanted to write this on a quiz, 41.81 would not be enough. We would need to say 41.81. In this case, this is west of south or to the left of the negative y axis. Either one of those, or however else you want to state it, you could, as I think the written up solutions that I published show, find the complement of that angle. So we found, if this is PC, we found this angle here, but I think the solutions I posted find this angle here, which should just be around 48 or something like that, just the complement of 41.81. So for that case, they would have to specify that their angle was south of west instead of west of south or below the negative x-axis. All of these mean the same thing as long as we are specific. All right, so now let's move on to part two of this problem. So now we're told asteroid C approaches some planet and lands on it at an angle 40 degrees. And it says southeast toward the planet. So here's our planet. I'll put here. The southeast direction is over here. So 40 degrees southeast would be something like that. And the magnitude of the momentum of asteroid C just before the impact, we're told. So P C magnitude is 30,000 kilograms meters per second. And we want to know if the impact lasted six seconds. So delta T equals six seconds before the asteroid came to rest. Find the net force magnitude and direction exerted on the asteroid during the impact. So this is the momentum that the asteroid has. It comes to a stop over a time span of six seconds, and we want to know uh, what force was required to do that. So now our P initial here is, well, I wrote here 30,000 kilograms meters per second, and that is, well, 40 degrees south of east, and our p-final is just zero. So the change, my delta p, oops, my delta p, well, the magnitude of it is going to be 30,000 kilograms meters per second. Right, it just undid that, and the direction must be the opposite. So if this was 40 degrees south of east, the opposite of that, so it would just be flipping this around, reversing the arrow, so like adding these two arrows together needs to give us zero, would mean that this vector here is now 40 degrees north of west. So we need we actually needed to do a little trig here seeing that this angle between east and our vector PC is the same as this angle between west. Um, yeah, so 40 degrees north of west is our final. So that means that, remember we have our relationship here, delta P equals F net delta t. So now we know our, if our delta p is this, 
and our delta t is that, we should be able to find f net. So 30,000, and I should be making these magnitudes because we're just thinking of the direction qualitatively. If I really wanted, I could break this down into x and y components and find them and then put them back. But, but that's not really necessary because we just know if something's moving in a line and to, to stop it, we just have to apply a force directly opposite that. So we can kind of just use our intuition there. But anyway, we have 30,000 kilogram meters per second equals the magnitude of F net times six seconds. So we just divide by six seconds and we get our F net is equal to 5,000 newtons. Sorry, the magnitude of F net is equal to 5,000 newtons and we found that the direction needs to be 40 degrees north, uh, east, or just opposite of, uh, sorry, north of west, my bad, opposite of south of east. So our object was initially traveling this way. To stop it, we need to apply a force exactly opposite that. Um, and that's this problem. This is a pretty tough one, uh, but I think it just emphasizes really well the necessity of being able to go back and forth between a qualitative understanding and just doing the algebra and trying to solve that way. Um, in this case, we started with the algebra and then it kind of became confusing which angle we were talking about for the, um, to find the direction of the momentum of asteroid C. Um, so there was some complexity there. Um, but once I got confused there, I drew out a picture kind of figured it out, cleared it up for myself, and then that made the algebra a little bit more intuitive. Um, hope this was helpful.